Subscribe to School Podcast. We're flying solo today. We're talking about the things that you are going to see in church. In church this Sunday, I am going to hear from the prophet Isaiah that the ears of the deaf shall hear words from a book. And in the gospel lesson, we're going to have Jesus spit on the ground, make mud, and give it a deaf person a wet willy with it so that he can hear again. It's, it's magnificent, it's, it's disgusting, and it's, it's, it's altogether too real. Uh, that we have a God who does not stand far away from the earthly problems of this world, but we also don't have a God who simply resigns the deaf to, to wait until one day they will hear in heaven. Instead, he, he joins us in our flesh, in our weakness. He cares so much about this creation that he even uses creation itself to offer healing. Uh, he, he, he joins water to the dust that we are formed out of and and from this water that is new life in baptism, we hear. And it's not just sort of a random word, but Jesus sighs under the weight of it and says, Ephatha, that is, be opened. Not just so that the deaf man can talk to his family, but so that he can hear the words and promises of Jesus. The words of the word, Jesus, who is come to earth, made flesh for you, for me, for all to carry our sins, to carry our weaknesses, to carry even our disabilities to the cross where he will bleed and die and rise again. You see, the gift of these readings sort of knit together is Jesus uh, is is promised in the Old Testament. We know that the Savior is coming and, 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 and it talks all the time about all these great things that are gonna come to pass and we look around this world and we just don't see them. And we have Jesus wrestling with it too. He actually struggles under the weight of it. He sighs and says, be opened. He he sighs because he is taking this man's deafness onto himself. He's taking the burden of everything that is wrong with this creation that is caused by sin. And there's only one place that he can carry it. Jesus, after taking upon himself the sins of all the world, also has to take the death of all the world. And so he dies on the cross. But Jesus also takes everything that sin causes, all of the, the damage that sin does, everything that is broken inside of creation. It's a burden that he has promised to pay for himself with every miracle that he performs. You see, the miracles, it's not just that some people get healing and most people don't. It's not just that, you know, some people, if they are really good enough or they pray hard enough, they somehow get God's attention, then they can get the miracle that they need. It's that all of the miracles, whether you see yours or not, have already been paid for on the cross because a miracle is undoing something that has been broken by sin. It's healing a disease and the disease is part of that thing that leads to death. It comes from sin. It's casting out a demon, a vanquishing of the devil. It's undoing the damage of sin because, well, that's that's what God does. He bears your sins and everything that comes with it for you, that you would have his life. So whenever Jesus performs a miracle, there's a cost to it. It actually costs him something. You actually see him sort of suffer under the weight of it, even as he trudges with that man's burdens all the way to the cross where he will die for him. And that's great for that one deaf man that he would hear the words of the book. But if you are still looking for your miracle, this actually speaks to you too. First and foremost, that the deaf of the ears, they're they're open not just for anything, but to hear the promises of God. So if you are still looking for your miracle, hear the promises of God. He died for you. He rose for you. So that when you struggle looking for your miracle, you can say, it has already been paid for. And so if I don't see it yet, it's coming. It's coming because it was already bought. It's sort of like waiting at the door for the UPS man. I know that guy's going to come here with all the junk I ordered from Amazon sooner or later. But until it does, I'm going to count on the fact that God who has promised is faithful. He does not pass us by. He does not leave us. He does not uh, abandon us. But instead, he already paid for our gift that we are clinging to. And so even if we don't see it yet, even in this life, we know what the resurrection holds. It holds the undoing of everything that destroys us. It makes Christianity not simply a, how do I get more stuff in this world? but a God who joins us in this world to even restore what is broken inside of it so that I don't need it to be perfect right now. But I can wait even now until the resurrection when I know that it will be. Because at last, in that last great day, when all of the promises of the Old Testament, they are made concrete in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting, we have the very same Jesus who joins us in the flesh, raising us in our new and perfect flesh, that we would live with him in eternity, that we would celebrate forever the joys of a creation that God has made for us without the damages of sin, that we would ever rejoice in his presence and in his gifts. This is what we're going to get to hear in church on Sunday. So I'm going to go. You should too.